So in the last video, we focused on our register component, which allowed us to um, register a user in the front end, which sent that to the back end and created the user and then automatically logged them in. In this video, we're going to be doing the login part and hopefully it shouldn't take as long as the last video, but there is one thing we need to be aware of. So the requests we've been making have been in kind of like the similar sort of format with uh, content type application JSON and the body has been uh, pretty much the same. So like here with register, we have something like this content type application JSON and the body, like just as a normal, like um, JavaScript object, which is then like turned into a JSON. But with the, when logging in, we'll be making use of this endpoint here. If you can see it, uh, the forward slash API forward slash token. So that, um, let me just zoom in a little bit. I don't know how well you can see it, but this guy here. Now, if we open this up and then actually try it out, the first thing is we need to uh, put in a username and password. So the username being the email and password being whatever password you have um, set for that user. So I'm just going to use a uh, one that's already been created. So test at test.com with password, hello world, and then execute it. And we get back like our access token along with like token type, but notice here the call response. So our content type here is application X dub 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 form dash uh, URL encoded. And you will also see that here as well. Whereas like all our other ones have been like application JSON. So we also have to respect this when making a request from the front end. Uh, on top of that, we also have this here. So this grant type equals ampersand username and then the email password and then it's client ID and client secret. So we have to respect that too. And uh, yeah, so that's what we'll do in this one, in this video. So let's jump back into the code base. And if we go into components, the components directory, let's create a new file and we'll call that login jsx so it's going to be very similar to our register one the only thing we really need to consider is our um our fetch our the the request to the endpoint so let's get started so let's first import react from react like so and we also need the error message which is automatically imported and also the user context. So import user context from uh, context user context. Now let's go ahead and say the uh, create the uh, component itself. And we need the email and we need the password. So when the user submits it, they'll just be using those two. So what we can do is actually just go back into register.jsx and let's just copy these two. And then just paste that in. We need use state from React. Um, what else do we need? We need the error message. So this here, and we also need the set token um, function as well. So let's just copy that as well from register and paste it into our login.jsx. And with that, we also need to import use context. Cool. So those are our like variables and functions, um, from the use state hook and our use context or context hook user one. Um, so let's first of all, just return the, uh, JSX. So what we can do as well, we can go back into the uh, register JSX and we can just copy the entire thing. So everything inside the return statement, let's paste it in here and let's get rid of the things that we don't want. So first of all, register won't be register, it will be login. Um, we also need to get rid of the confirm password so we can get rid of this here. And just the button at the bottom, we can replace that to a login. 
And yeah, that's that. We, yeah, so that's our like JSX sorted. We need to like, have, for some reason, I don't know why it's not throwing an error, but handle submit, we have to create that too. Um, our register JSX, yeah, we don't need that anymore. So yeah, let's go ahead and start writing that in. So as we did with the register, uh, component, we can also do something similar where we create our submit login helper function. And this of course will be asynchronous. And what we'll do here is we'll do our request options and this will take a method, the method type will be a post request. We also want the headers and remember, as I said uh, earlier, so for, for our case with content type, we want it to be um, a, the not application JSON, but that X dub 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 form URL encoded. So make sure the spelling is on point. Otherwise this will not work. So application and then forward slash X dub 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 dash form dash URL encoded like so. And yeah, just if you're, if you're a bit paranoid about spelling, you can just always copy it from this here. But yeah, that's our uh, content type now for our body. Now this we can actually copy because there's quite a bit to type in. So let's uh, put in stringify and then the back ticks as we'll be passing in variables here. So what we want is this here. And this is again on um, forward slash API forward slash token. And the kind of curl command is this here. So we want that part here where it says grant type and then equals ampersand username equals the whatever email you passed in, password, all that. So just copy that and throw that in here. Now for the username, so this part here, we can get rid of that. And what we can do is just replace this with a dollar sign, curly brackets, and then throw in email. And then with our password, we can also do the same thing here. So this uh, hello world, we can set to dollar sign, curly brackets, and then just the password. Um, yeah, so that's our kind of, uh, request options or our request that we'll be making. And that's what we're going to send to our forward slash API forward slash token endpoint. So let's do the response is equal to we'll await and we'll do fetch and we'll say forward slash API forward slash token and then just throw in the request options like so. And we'll get the data. So data equals await response.json. And now let's do our checks just like we did in the last, uh, in the register component. So if not response dot, okay. Then let's set uh, the error message to um, data dot detail. Oops. Else, let's set token to data dot access underscore token. So again, if the response is not okay, then we'll create an error message. Otherwise, we'll set the token to the token that we get back. So this thing here, so access token, uh, and then this long string there. Um, yeah, cool. So that's our um, submit login as our help function. Now we can go ahead and create our handle submit. And this is a rather simple one. And what we'll do here is handle submit. And this again, will take in an event. And what we'll do is e so the event dot prevent default, and then finally submit login. Cool, yeah. So that's our handle submit, and that hopefully should be all of it. 
And the last thing we need to do is export this component. So we'll say export default, and then just log in. And yeah, let's now go jump and let's go jump into app.jsx and make use of it. So let's import the login from components and then forward slash login. And then if you go down where we have our like login placeholder, we can replace that now with just login. And if we go back to our front end, we'll see now we have the register form, but also the login form. So let's try it out. So let's do something like, um, uh, let's use a user that we've already created. So test.test.com and then password, login. And it works. So we have our awesome leads manager. If we inspect the application, uh, the kind of local storage, we have our token or awesome leads token. Now, if I were to log out, so now that's set back to null as we did in the last video. And let's do a different one. Let's do test at some like random uh, characters and then a password, a random password, login. We have our error message, invalid credentials. So it's working smoothly. Um, let's just try test at test.com again. And with our like incorrect password, login, still invalid credentials. We log in one more time properly. And yeah, there we have it. We have our logout, logout. And so that's it. That's really just the login component. It's way more simpler compared to our register one that we did. Then again, we also focus on user context. But yeah, that's it for this video. Um, and then in the next video, we will focus on actually creating the table, having our whole like making use of the uh, getting the leads and editing them and uh, deleting them, creating them, all that. So we'll do that next. We'll be focusing on replacing this placeholder with an actual table and making it like a, yeah, a, a proper app that uh, someone could use. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, please leave a like and also subscribe. I have a Discord channel, uh, Discord server, sorry. So feel free to swing by there and uh, drop a message or any suggestions that you have for future videos. Um, but other than that, stay healthy, stay safe, and I hope to see you in the next video.